9.38 a.m. Uh, best apologies here. The sound system's not working today. It was working yesterday. Do repairs. So uh, maybe later on in the court session today, the magistrate can make a motion to uh, take bids for an expenditure for a new sound system. Sam Colorado. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Loxton? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Here. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. All present? Okay. Uh, Jen Sotero and Jimmy. Hello. Pastor of a Calvary, Calvary Road Baptist Church. Can you lead us in the invocation and the uh, pleasure? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for today. Thank you again, Lord, for this time, this opportunity, Lord, to conduct business on behalf of the county. Lord, we do pray that you be with each and all of our elected officials here, those that are represented here, uh, each and every agency. We thank you, Lord, for the public service. And God, we just pray that you guide them with wisdom. We pray that you be with each and everyone here, uh, God, and that, uh, Lord, above all, Lord, that, uh, Lord, if we think of you and think of others first, uh, God, how it can better all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us have a question. Salute. Pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Those uh, transfers were made for September 17th, September 30th, and also for October 1st. Second. We've got a motion by First District Magistrate Mitchell, a second by Second District Magistrate Lawson to approve the Treasurer's Transfer Report. Sam, call the roll. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayo? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Presentation approval of all bills. Make a motion to approve all bills. Got a motion by 4th District Magistrate Greyhill, a second by 3rd <coughs> District Magistrate Gladwell to approve all bills. Sam Cole Rowe. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Greyhill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, we, we have two meeting minute approvals. Um, the minutes for September 17th, the regularly scheduled fiscal court meeting of 2019. We'll vote together. Uh, we, we can put them both together or separately, by the way. Absolutely. And also make a motion to do a special meeting of September 20th, 2019. Got a second by the first district manager Mitchell, Sam Cole Rowe. Mr. Rayo? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Loxton? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number seven, there's no presentation. Oh, business none. Uh, new business, first reading and public hearing of zoning ordinance 2019 D 29. Charles Lumpkin. Felicia?
this report compares in and we also reach the plan commission, set its own change, and approve and accept the recommendations of the plan commission in this matter without seven minutes. Now that form be ordained by this report, the county bullet, Tom of Kentucky, section one of the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bull County, and will be prescribed in the Minister of the Plan Commission in document 2019 D-29, which have changed from agricultural to our own residential. Section two, this order strict effect on taxes publication. Section 3, the section provision requires the orders to be declared unconstitutional and invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction, then the remaining disorders shall not be affected and shall remain in full force of effect. <coughs> in the first reading of public hearing, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the first day of October 2019, to begin a second reading of vote upon, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of October 2019. <coughs> Thank you, Rob. Anyone here to speak for zoning uh, ordinance 2019-Z-29? Anyone here to speak against zoning ordinance 2019-Z-29? Hearing none. Felicia, first reading and public hearing of zoning ordinance 2019-Z-30, Clara S. and Daniel Young. This is Planning Commission Docket 2019-Z-30. <coughs> the applicant is Clara S. and Daniel Ewing. They're asking to rezone the property from agricultural to conservation at 715 Wilderness Way. It's four acres more or less, and the comprehensive plan shows low density residential. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on September 12, 2019. Based upon that testimony, the Planning Commission finds the requested zoning change is not in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. However, with the division of the property into two lots, it will no longer be in performance and the requested zoning change will bring the two properties into compliance with Bullock County zoning regulations. The opponent objected to this proposed zoning change on the following basis. Opponents had concerns on how many trailers could be placed on the property. Based on the testimony, the Bullock County Planning Commission sends a favorable recommendation for this requested zoning change. <clears throat> First reading for Commonwealth Kentucky County Bullet, zoning orders number 19-21. Norris will enter the chain of zoning of certain property from agricultural conservation. The property in question is four acres more or less, located at 715 Wilderness Way in an unincorporated area of the county. Whereas the fiscal court of Bullet County is considered to have a public hearing of the Planning Commission and recommendations of the Commission. Whereas the fiscal court concurs in and Dr. the reason the Planning Commission for zoning change. And approve to accept the recommendations of the Planning Commission in this matter for south seven minutes. Now, the four be ordained by the fiscal court of County Bullock, Commonwealth, Kentucky. Session one for the property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County. The more particular described in the Minister of the Planning Commission in document 2019 Z 30 is about change from agricultural to conservation. Session two, this order to take effect upon passage of publication. Session three, issuing section provision of process orders be declared unconstitutional and invalid for any reason by a court of competent jurisdiction. And the remaining disorders shall not be affected and shall remain full force of effect. In first reading and public hearing, the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the first day of October 2019, to begin the second reading and vote upon the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of October 2019. Thank you, Rob. Anyone here to speak for zoning ordinance 2019 Z 
probation zone, and they can hire one for a nice double lot or model or home, or a still stick built home to stay with me from the guidelines. Remember, they will also be my neighbors, so I would like to give them options. I believe this zone will fit as it could form a section A of the Big for Claire you I as her lawyer that support her in this endeavor. She's got to have the best <coughs> the way to make it work is with this conservation zone that she needs. There may be temporarily a global home on the plans are that would be only temporary while a modular or a larger permanent structure is with them. Thank you, Mr. Spangler. Who the one that wrote the contract and suggested the um, conservation zone specifically for the reason that if there is a mobile home that's placed on it, it would still be in compliance with the zoning um, because we wanted to bring all the zoning in that area in compliance. So if there is a mobile home placed on it, we don't know if it's going to be temporary. We do know that the plans right now is to be around the house and build a better house. But we can't guarantee that it's going to be temporary. That's what they're planning at this point. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Let me ask another thing. How can you went with the rezoning and not, you don't even want to try and get a conditional use permit to uh, temporarily take this care of this term on a conditional use permit? That's a great question, and this is the answer. We are selling this property in the four acre track. We didn't want the new buyer to have to come back and ask for something after the fact. We also wanted to protect the neighbors around it, that everybody would be in compliance in the zoning. Um, and that's why we didn't go with that conditional use permit. Um, I think with a sale coming, we want to represent the other parties in a fair manner also. Um, there's another agent involved, but Bottom line, we just want to bring everything into compliance right up front and not have to deal with additional things. Okay. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Luann. Thank you, Luann and John. Anyone here to speak against zoning ordinance 2019 Z-30? And your name is Bobby Michael. Okay. And I live at 701 Wilderness Lane, where <coughs> the house that they're talking about, or the residence that they're talking about, is directly, directly behind my house. Uh, I keep hearing different things every time I come to a hearing. Now I hear that, um, I just talked to Laura, is that your name? Yeah. Lou. And I'm hard with words, okay? Just bear with me on this. Um, I was under interpretation that these people were changing the new zoning to put a temporary mobile home there so they can either rebuild or remodel. Okay. But the county attorney here, when I was at the last meeting, he told, I don't know if I misinterpreted or what he said was what he said, uh, that if they change the ordinance on this to conservation, that these people can put at least one mobile home per acre of land there. Is that what she said? You're, you're almost correct. What I add is our family zone regulations allow as little as a one acre conservation zone, but that would not be affected in this particular property because the regulations further provide if you set this up your minimum so you could have one mobile home on three acres in a conservation zone based upon the state of the zone and so on. But going along with that, I have, <clears throat> I'm not a person, I don't write about what I got, I work hard for what I've got. I spent 21 years in the Marine Corps and I work hard to get there. And this home is our dream home that we bought. My house is appraised at right at $300,000. 
and for me, for, for them to change the, the zoning and parkerize a mobile home behind my house, it's just, it's not just, I don't know how to say it, it's just going to bring, you all, not take into consideration what it's going to do to property, property, property assessment, you all think that any such consideration when you do this, do you also take into consideration what other people, what it's going to do with people around it. one person, but you got five people living around it, you all think that into consideration what it does. I just, I, I'm just lost the word that I just, I, I never expected this. I, don't take, I have nothing wrong with this lady. We're real good friends. I take care of her, she takes care of me. But I just, I have a hard time dealing with this. You know, I, this is my dream home. I just, I, I'm totally against this. Nothing against her personally, but I'm just totally against this. I guess that's the reason I was asking more of so on the line of the condition you used to get. That is the issue you used to get there in the that's the reason I was talking about that is that would give them an opportunity to build or whatever they want to do with the conditional use permit and other things. So I agree. That, well, that's what I was uh, referring to there earlier and everything. That, uh, How do we want to be blockers? I don't think you can be deceitful. Um, but when a person comes in and says, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is our intention. We want to put a temporary facility back there and then we're going to rebuild or remodel. What you, why would you have to change the zone? Why don't you just get a temporary permit, put a, a temporary structure there for them to rebuild or remodel? Otherwise, and y'all probably see it happening in the past, you bring a mobile home in there for them to rebuild or remodel. That mobile home's not moving. It's going to be their investment. You know, it's life. I don't think it'll be their temporary. That's all I have to say. I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? <clears throat> Just a quick yeah. question, John. Is it this is four acres more or less than that threat total? And you said <coughs> the most they can do is a mobile home on three acres approximately. Is that right? Put one trailer on it. Uh, Actually, this was a competitive track, I believe. But she already had an eight acre track, and they this is a track next door to it. If the property had actually been left as a resident, excuse me, an agricultural track, you put three mobile homes on that without any question whatsoever because it'll allow a family, a parent with a child, and another trailer. But our conservation zone does require, and on this case, would eliminate anything more than one trailer per three acres. Uh, whether you put a restriction or not, that is all we do. What was the total acreage on that? I think it's closer to about 12 acres. It's about 14 acres combined. 10 on the other? 14. 14 acres. Mm -hmm. Our office, um, we get temporary conditional use permits for a trailer as they're building a new house, and we will go out after it expires and make sure that home home is taken off that property. If it's a temporary conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. And, and the intent, Clara, of you is to stay there? Is that your intent? Or are we dividing this property and potentially She's selling, selling it? off four acres and she is going to stay on the remaining ten. Okay. <coughs> okay. If you look at it, it's going to tell you what the eventual <coughs> distribution would be. The original track of 8.25 will be added by another track. <coughs>
get on the phone and put on there. She does not have the finances and cannot get money to do that. And that is the whole reason for taking that four acres off so she can pay off all her debts, move over to the 10 acres, and everything is going to be um, in compliance with our zoning regulations. Okay, so that makes sense. Thanks for clarifying. <coughs> Any other comments on building ordinance two zero one nine z dash thirty? Yeah, Jones. <coughs> so right now it is an act. Right? It is an act for all parts. So if, it, if the zoning stays the same, she can put multiple. She can put multiple, multiple trailers on there. Yeah. Multiple trailers on there for stuff for our own regulations. So if we switch it, they change the thing up. Switch it to conservation. She can only have one of them. If the four acres becomes a freestanding lot, only one trailer will be allowed on that lot. Is there any kind of setbacks on conservation? Agricultural setbacks. There are setbacks on it where you can vary the other one. Is there something you could adjust? You know, I know utilities and stuff. That you could adjust that or it would help the neighbors. I don't know. I'm just not thinking.
committee members can be Robert Watkins, Bill Corbus, and Glenn and or Tammy Crusades. So present in agreement. I see Robert. Uh, and Glenn and Tammy yes. have some sort of thing. Is that a police stand? Glenn and Tammy. Hello, Glenn. Servant. Uh, any discussion?
out to set up the meeting with, the, with Ms. Kim Amy to let and give us to know exactly what we're supposed to turn the same day. Okay. See, I, 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 we would do it. And it's my fault, I guess, because we never turned them in on time. But um, I have an email from the item uh, from an ex employee from the 30th of June that tells about this, but I was never informed. But in any case, we would like to set up a meeting. And I want to know, you know, exactly whenever we're supposed to have any of these things in, we will be able to do it. Okay, Paul. Thank, thank, thank you so much. And here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll, we'll set up uh, monthly meetings to compare, if that's fair enough, with yourself and Denise. And if it's in agreement with the magistrates and 10 a.m. treasurer, and we'll make sure that moving forward, because the, the whole obligation of everybody here is to make sure that we're physically responsible, all of us, you yourself, myself, this physical body, that we're responsible to the electorate in Will County. And we, we appreciate you coming here today and explain this as well. But we will take a to make sure that these meetings happen, to make sure that everything balances up in the fall because we have high budgets. Uh, this county is not as wealthy as folks as the perception is. Okay? But we thank you for your time, for being here, Paul. And, uh, <coughs> Can I, say, can I say just a couple of statements? Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. <coughs> and uh, so you all, the taxpayers, are the ones who pay the honorable uh, court members and myself. We are obligated to you all you know, to, to save your taxes or whatever. Currently, the, the jail, I'm not alarmed. I am over budget on a few of the things, but I'm not alarmed. Those uh, six or eight weeks ago, approximately, if I'm not mistaken, sir, you all told me that I was the only one that from last year's budget that, that saved it. And we were, we were in debt when we started saving 2% of food money and all that stuff and stuff. But whatever the case is, right, at the present time, we have more work programs than they ever had here. And we're working on another one uh, to generate lots of money for here. <clears throat> But at any case, uh, I, at any time, I don't want to go over the budget. I'm doing the best that we can. Uh, but, but you all know, I mean, it's, it's very tough to hire people when you pay $13.50 an hour. When you see a sign that says they'll pay uh, $16.50 to make chicken sandwiches. But at any case, I have an open door. If you gentlemen, the only one that's been over there, I saw has been over twice. And I think Dennis was meant to come over once and, and they didn't tell me he was out there. If they would have, I would have, would have made arrangements. Thing. But I, I, I want you all, all of you, to come over. Anybody, just call me and make arrangements to come over. And I'll have to, I, 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 whatever it is, we only had the records back to January 7th. And uh, whatever the case is, I, I want you all to come over. And I, I need you all to do I've got a number of issues I'd like to address with you. But thank you. Joe Watkins, thank you so much for coming today. And uh, we'll make sure that you get your meetings as requested. And uh, any, other, any other comments from the chair? Well, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, here <coughs> Actions requested for GovTel contracts for credit debit card machines. These are located at the animal shelter, EMS, planning, home, and COVID enforcement.
Spencer County as well. And if you ever get the opportunity to go there, you should.
youth organizations, and other sports organizations' activity involved in promoting conservation. We are in the business of promoting the fraternal spirit among sportsmen of Kentucky by education and example that was solidified into an association working toward the goals of conservation and sportsmanship. Our facility includes a 37-acre spot lake, an acre-and-a-half pond that we have stocked with uh, catfish, bluegill, crappie, and bass. Uh, we have an outdoor muzzle loading range. We have an outdoor 22 rifle range that we just uh, put in here a couple of years ago. We have an indoor and outdoor archery range. It's a good facility there for people that are in the archery, uh, which has become quite popular um, in this county. We have an indoor pistol and 22 rifle range, and an outdoor ski and trap area uh, shoot. And we have a, uh, a modern lodge building as well. Uh, our dues. Our last $11.50 a month. Okay, Joe. All right, so I guess what you, your informant, and also you had to ask about signs as well. Have you got your sign yet? Uh, no, I uh, haven't. Uh, I'm going to take a hit with uh, Troy Bar and talk to him to see what we need to do about getting this. We can get our identity uh, known out there. Right. Uh, we're welcome to work with some uh, people in the public, <laughs> local area that let us put the signs up on their personal property as well. But we're hoping that maybe we can get a sign you know, from the state and you know, that advertise our facility up here. We have a lot of the community and it's going to be better than <laughs> you're, actually, you're actually in Bullock County. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And that's something I want to point out because a lot of people that hear Jefferson County Sportsman Club and think it's something in Bullock County. You're on the water for real with yes. Bullock County. Yes, I mean, you have a you have Jefferson County. I, I'm going to try to see what we can do about maybe changing that name to Bullock County Sportsman Club. I'd love to see that. Yeah, because, you know, when you, you might try to promote it, and then you're saying, you know, but you're in Bullock County, you know, so, but anyway, I don't know how that all comes about. I know that these group of people start to
No, it's focused. It is going to make a difference in campus. Well, I was going to say that. And that could change the world. Thank you, but it is. Any, any comments from the magistrate, Dennis? Uh, I'm good right now. Appreciate it. Sean? I think you were kind of joking, but I kind of think that, I mean, I'd be serious too, but I would, I'd like to make a motion to set bids on repairing, improving, and or replacing the audio video equipment here in the fiscal courtroom. I think it's imperative that people at home can hear and see what's going on if they can't make it to one of the meetings. And, and I know, God bless Candy So, she's always over here trying to get this working, and uh, it's a tape deck from the 1980s that we're using up there, so I think it would be imperative to make a motion to accept bids on repairing, improving, and or replacement of the audio video equipment here in the fiscal courtroom. So, you got it. <coughs> Thank you, Max. Uh, <laughs> I uh, really appreciate that, too. Okay, got a, got a motion by first district manager, uh, second district manager, to uh, take bids on a new audio uh, system here for the Bullcamp Fiscal Courtroom, the second fourth district manager, Mr. Ray Hill, Sam Paul Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Ray Hill? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Lawson? Let's see you, Bruce, in the You're doing a wonderful job. Okay. I'm going to vote you twice next time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
when you go back to work, if you want to go back to work, that's totally up to you. Our whole existence is about patient care. Your shift, no matter what you can tell me you didn't orchestrate, that when you guys are working, you have six trucks. When you're not working, people call in, you got two or three trucks in the road. That's not acceptable. Acceptable at all. And I'm not saying that's your fault at all, but our job totally is patient care and keeping our county safe. So I implore you, if you go back to work, that's all we ask. Let's put trucks in the road. Put this behind you, walking forward. This is one of, it's a good instance that happened, and I know you guys don't believe it, but this is the true reason why we need a human resources person. Is, is this reason. You know, everybody's overwhelmed and, and you know, going through things, but I implore you, make our county the best you can do. When you get back into work, I promise you, we'll protect you like we have. You, you can't go back in and do you know, I heard a great man say one time, he says, when you come to work, he said, you get up early, you show up on time, you do your job, you go home. And your employer gives you a paycheck. Simple. Simple as that. And if you do that, I promise you, we'll write you a check every time. But I, there, there was a lot of things we brought into it because you, you guys are great employees, you know your jobs. Okay? But there's been some twisting. There's been some Maybe she said, I said, you don't say, I don't like you, I don't like you. And I understand that. When you get a bunch of people together, but all I ask you to do, if you want to come back, is just do the best you can for us. And we'll protect you, I promise you that on that. We, we, we took everything into order, and we want to make sure that our people in our county are taken care of. And there's some incidents that we have on paper that after you guys were suspended or fired, we haven't had the best care of us. And that what we get upset about because we just need that. And I appreciate you guys coming here, playing your case, and showing us that we got some things to do. And maybe you do too. Thank you. Thank you guys. That's all I got to say. Okay. Uh, Second district Logston made the motion. Uh, we have a second the first district magistrate Mitchell. Sam called row. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Logston? Yes. Mr. Laswell? No. Mr. Rayhill? Yes. Judge Summers? No. Motion carried. Motion carried. Uh, any other discussion about court members? Yeah, I'd like to uh, I don't know if it needs to be formed a motion, John, but I'd like to uh, ask of each of the department heads in the county to submit their current standard operating procedures to the judge executive and the fiscal court by the next fiscal court meeting. I think this aligns with the timing of hiring a human resource director. I think to echo what Mr. Rayhill said, uh, I think this is a great opportunity for our county to come together. Our county's growing. Our county government's growing. The number of employees is growing. The human resource director has never been more important, I think, in the history of our county. And with that being said, we've got a county handbook that I think is extremely outdated. And uh, the requirements of each department is a lot of he said, she said. It needs to be black and white. It doesn't need to be gray. Everybody needs to know their expectations, whether they're on an A shift, a B shift, a second shift, a third shift. So I'd like to make the recommendation that each county department submit the current standard operating procedures that they're currently using or implementing to the county judge and the fiscal court by the next fiscal court meeting. Sir. Got a motion for all the department heads by second district magistrate Logston and approved by and seconded by fourth district magistrate Rayo for the department heads to provide uh, with standard operating procedures that they have in place to this date. Sam Cop, are there any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Sir, Ray Hill? Sir. Hey, I would take the blame for this. This is our fault. You know, and I was, I've been in this since my 
second or first year of my second term, and this should have been done. And I'm going to put my name down on top of that. Is this administration is moving fast? They're trying to take care of every situation. They're doing everything they can to do. You know, <clears throat> there's things that, that that we should have been done years ago, and it hasn't. And, it, and that falls on me because I've been here almost five years. Uh, but we're taking a line with Jerry's administration and trying to make these things what they should be. And we need to help him in this situation. And uh, again, I put on record that it's, you know, it's, it's part of my problem. Is, you know, when I got elected for this position, you know, there's a lot of things I didn't know I was supposed to take care of. <laughs> there's a lot of things that, you know, that you're, that you're involved, that your name is on there. I mean, was, the first two years we was in the thing, I think I got, my name was on six lawsuits. And I didn't mean, know I was supposed to take I'm a part of this government body, and it's, it's our responsibility to take care of. I don't know. I kind of echo that. I've been on this court this, I'm in my 18th year. And you're dealing with things every single software day. But we've got a good court here. I mean, we really, really do. Uh, I've, I've worked with five different judges now. and uh, But we do have a good court here and everything. And we take these things to heart. We work at it. We work not just come over to these meetings and it's all good. We don't forget about it. That's not it. It's a 24-hour day job. I, mean, I, I had calls up last night after 9 o'clock last night. It wasn't pertaining to this one, but something else in the name. But I've had people come to my church and everything. Come and get me. I want to talk to them. I've had to come back to the sanctuary. I want to talk to them about things. I don't do that. I don't do that. But that actually does happen. And you're dealing with these things seven days a week. And I'm not regretting or anything like that, but you, you stay busy with this job. I don't take the job on me because I, I try to do the very best I can and this court does too. So, but anyway, I appreciate what y'all do, how you serve, what have you. So you're all the life minded people out there. So we really appreciate it. That's all I'm going to say. Anything else? <coughs> Sam Cole Row. Uh, Mr. Watson? Yes. Mr. Roswell? Yeah. Mr. Rayhoff? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Uh, any other discussion of court members? Dennis, what time is it? Hello. Now it is the Thank you. Your Honor. And your motion is? I'd like to speak. I know you asked for the, the last <coughs> of the executors. As a county taxpayer, I'd like to weigh in a little bit on this last subject for the four people in front of me. I understand and appreciate you putting these people back on the street or give them the option to be back on the street. I appreciate that. As a taxpayer, I also understand that what your job is and what you're doing, it does take a lot out of each and every one of you, and I appreciate that. However, if, if I see that you have made a decision to overturn in any way, shape, or form, the decisions of the, the people that's in charge of these four people at work to put them back on the street. Uh, as a taxpayer, I feel like they're entitled to back payment or payment since they were suspended. There's a, there's other issues, underlying issues. In one hand, you're saying these people, yeah, you know, we looked at it and we appreciate what you do. We're going to give you a chance to come back to work, but we're not going to pay you, so we're going to punish you anyway. As a taxpayer, I'm telling you, I would like to see you keep it like you said, where they go back to work. You give them their money. They didn't do anything wrong. If they done something wrong, they still be terminated. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Sam Call Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Rayhoff? Yes. Judge Summers? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Watson? Yes. Motion carried to adjourn. Thank you. Okay, the one.